I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you and good evening. I'll ask uh, Kim to do the roll call, please. Thank you, Mayor. Councillor Phillips? Here. Councillor Pasalski? Here. Councillor Horning? Here. Councillor Frank? Here. Council President Wright? Here. Mayor Barber? Here. Councillor Montero? Present. Thank you. Thank you all. We have an exciting moment right now, the swearing in of our newest police officer. Uh, City Manager, you want to introduce that? Sure. I'll introduce our, our fearless police chief, uh, Chief uh, Dave Ham, who is going to take the reins here and swear in our newest officer. So Jared Eschweiler, officer, Seaside Police Department, has just joined the ranks and uh, started uh, November First, I believe so we've only had him here for a couple of weeks we're all getting uh, used to and knowing him so we're really excited to be doing that um, for the ceremony for swearing him in I'd like to invite him up uh, family if you want to come around here Jared I'm gonna have you face here we're supposed to use the microphone apparently so you'll face this way <laughs> so we can get this going but please get as many photographs as you want uh, raise your right hand for me I, Jared Eschweiler, I, Jared Eschweiler, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, I will support the Constitution of the United States, the State of Oregon, the State of Oregon, and the laws of the City of Seaside, and the laws of the City of Seaside, and that I will, and that I will, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, faithfully and honestly, faithfully and honestly, perform the duties of police officer, Perform the duties of police officer of the city of Seaside, Oregon. Of the city of Seaside, Oregon. During my term of employment. During my term of employment. So help me God. So help me God. Welcome aboard. Thank you, sir. I gave him a fair warning that you might have some uh, questions or at least some questions. Oh, we've got, for we've him, got so lots of questions. Hit them hard if you want. <laughs> Officer Eschweiler, tell us a little bit about yourself, your family, and how long you've been at Seaside. So I just moved out here into Seaside. Uh, I'm from Sandy, Oregon. I originally grew up in Clackamas. Mm -hmm. I've been in the Army National Guard for 10 years as a combat engineer. Uh, I also worked in Portland uh, for AMR, American Medical Response, mm -hmm. and as security out there. I'm really excited to be out here in, Sandy, er, in Seaside. I love it. It's great. Um, the weather's actually not that cold and windy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. nice. <laughs> Last night I was totally fine. So oh, good. I think it's great out here. Good. Other questions from the council? No, but welcome aboard. Welcome. Yeah. Thank welcome. you. Yes, welcome. Yeah. Happy to have you. Thank now, you very Chief, much. does this mean we're at full strength now? Negative. No. We have uh, <laughs> one more to go um, to uh, replace. Uh, Tappert uh, oh, yeah. has left, so we're getting uh, pretty deep into the process oh. with that background, and so we're hoping to have a final job offer here real soon, and so we will continue on with that hiring. Good. So, nope, we got one more to do. Wonderful. Good. All right. Thank you. Again, and thank you, Jared. It's good to have you on board. Take a picture. Welcome. No fields here. Appreciate you coming. Any else from yes. Seaside PD? Thank you. All right on. Okay. Good. Other family members? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We'll get some photos back get here. Some photos out right there. Right on. Good. Okay. You. Very good. <laughs> Great. I neglected to ask for an, a motion to approve the agenda. So move. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. Those in favor say aye. 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 Pros the same. Thank you. Merrick, our um, student representative, are you here, Merrick? I don't see you. Don't see him. Uh, he may arrive a little later. We'll <sighs> swing back. Uh, okay. At this time, I'll open the floor for a uh, comments from the public on any item not on the agenda tonight. If you'd like to speak to the council, please come to the microphone, identify yourself and your address, and um, keep your comments to three minutes. Anyone? I don't think we have anybody logging in tonight, do we? No. We did get a couple of letters that are uh, a matter of record, uh, there, and uh, the council has received those. So I'll close that portion of our meeting. Thank you. And ask the council if anyone needs to declare a potential conflict of interest on any item on the agenda tonight. No, sir. Hearing none. 
I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as circulated. I so move. Second? second. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same. The motion carries. Mm -hmm. No reports or presentations this evening. Unfinished business. Uh, we have a recommendation coming from the softball field presented by the Seaside School District. Um, Spencer, do you want to kind of introduce that topic this evening, please? Sure. Um, and why don't we invite our school district representatives yes, to come up while I, yeah. while I talk a little bit. So uh, in your packet tonight, there is a staff report outlining uh, the process we've gone through. I think that council's uh, familiar with this, but for those in our public who are not, um, uh, Seas the Seaside School District has been looking for a place to put a needed softball mm -hmm. facility and have identified a, a, a location at Broadway Park. And uh, together, the school district, the city, and Sunset Empire Park and Recreation District have been uh, working through this. Um, uh, at the last council meeting, the direction they received from our city council was to go gather additional public input into, uh, into the, the work that the, di the school district had done. And uh, we believe they have done that. What you'll find in, in the packet is a recommendation um, if the council is inclined to, uh, imp to uh, approve their request to use city property at Broadway, Broadway Field. And we have two conditions in there. First, that the school district create a task force committee or other group with representation from the school district, the city, and Sunset Empire uh, to guide the design and decisions related to the construction of the softball facility and that uh, all three entities must uh, approve final design improvements. So one, one thing is, as a reminder, these are all just concepts. Um, there's a lot of engineering that needs to happen. It's more detailed work, but the school district's not going to want to spend that money until they know they have property that they can work with. So that's what they're hoping to get here tonight. But we want to have all of the signers to the Broadway Field Interlocal Agreement kind of be able to participate in that process as we all have a vested interest. Second condition is that prior to the construction of the facilities, we enter into a new uh, interlocal agreement um, for Broadway Park. Some of that, I think there's some, some, <coughs> some inadequacies that we've identified in the current agreement and then we need to incorporate the softball facility into a new one. And so uh, we'll want to be working that on the meantime so we don't hold anything up. Um, but we also won't know some of the details to put in there until we have the final design of any softball facility. So um, the other thing, that, besides uh, requesting more public input, one of the conditions previously the council discussed was getting buy-in from all the signers of the batting facility agreement. That would be the city, the city, Sunset Empire Park and Rec District and uh, Seaside Kids. You'll know in your packet you have um, letters from all those entities, and so they've uh, met that request of the council. So uh, happy to turn the time over to the school district, and uh, I'm sure I can answer questions, they can answer questions. They've got a presentation for tonight, and uh, we'll turn it back to you, Mayor. Hey, thank you. Uh, Susan, welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'll turn the floor to you to give your presentation and introduce your team with, with you. Great. Thank you, Mayor Barber uh, and uh, City Council. We're glad to be back. Once again, I'm Susan Penrod, the superintendent of Seaside School District. I have two gentlemen with me here who you have met, but I'll introduce them again. Uh, Brian Hardeback, our project manager, and Zach Stokes from ZCS Engineering. Okay, it, it is wonderful. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kyle, for uh, that information. And um, w I just wanted to start by saying we're all here for the common purpose uh, of providing our athletes with um, equitable access. So on the next slide, this is information that you have had before, but I wanted to make sure uh, for anyone present uh, to be able to share why we need a new softball field. Um, 
not only is the district committed to providing high quality, equitable, and a long-term facility for our softball athletes, but we uh, also have a Title IX complaint that was made against the district uh, through the Office of Civil Rights. We have some specific items there that we have been required to update. Um, those are some examples um, uh, to give you an idea. Also a review, uh, the locations that we have considered as starting uh, the beginning of this process. Um, the Seaside School Board uh, chose to first look at Wahana Fields, uh, the fields um, that the school district owns. And through that due diligence, it was discovered that the, um, the quality of the land as well as um, wetlands um, did not see this as um, as a viable option. Uh, at that point, then we moved on to be able to look at uh, Broadway Field, will, where the current softball field is, and the North 40 concurrently uh, to see which location would best suit the needs. Um, the North 40 uh, was eliminated for a variety of reasons. The city council uh, shared, all of you shared that you have um, through your, uh, your parks survey and have um, some potential other plans for that location. And that was communicated to us by our city manager on October 24th to reinforce that. Um, so then of course we move on to Broadway Field um, and we presented a couple different um, possibilities within Broadway Field, um, both the Northwest, uh, a Northwest location and, um, and a Southeast location. Uh, and we at that time brought to you letters of support from Sunset Empire Parks and Rec and the Hirsch family. And, um, and then now as, uh, as Mr. Kyle shared, we do have a letter of support from Seaside Kids. Also at, uh, at our last meeting, we talked about, and your suggestion was to engage further with our community. So I'll take just a few moments to share about those events. Our first event was on September 30th. Uh, we, um, Brian Hardebeck and I uh, were at our homecoming football game because we know a we can reach a lot of people in uh, at that event. We had wonderful engagement with, um, as you see there, we counted up 135 people that we talked to at that event, uh, and that included uh, our our athletes, um, not only through softball, but from other, other sporting events who use the field regularly. And, um, and we spoke to a lot of parents and, of course, um, staff and community members who do not use the field but are familiar with it. Um, there was um, a lot of support for the Northwest concept. Next, on October 11th, um, the Seaside Kids Board invited us to, um, to their annual pancake feed. Um, there were many, many people uh, there. It was, it was very well attended, and specifically, we talked to about 45 people there um, at our booth, and um, several members of, of the Seaside Kids Board were there, and um, especially uh, their board chair, Scott White, was there presenting with us. Our last event, um, October 26th at Sunset Recreation Center, uh, Skylar Archibald hosted that with us. Um, we had 21 people in attendance and had a really good conversation. Um, we appreciated um, our folks from the city and from the Sunset Board and, and even um, uh, County Commissioner was there as well. Um, Seaside Kids Board presented and represented during that time. So 
we worked really hard to message all of these events. We advertised in the paper. We appreciated the help from uh, the chamber and Sunset Empire messaging out. We also communicated um, a number of times through a flyer with um, all of our families and, um, and some other resources. So we were glad for the help on that. Um, we also uh, shared um, during our board meeting on October 18th and had some, some folks in the audience as well. So in addition to these events, we had a survey, which um, a copy of the survey is in your packet. And uh, this survey was open um, for from September 30th to November 7th. Um, at our events, community members and uh, anyone who, who attended were encouraged to fill out that survey uh, during the event, but we also provided information so they could um, fill it out afterwards as well. We wanted to make sure that any of our stakeholders who could not attend those three events still had access to the survey. That was sent out twice, and we did receive um, more feedback um, after sending that out again. Um, John and I uh, talked about how can we um, display uh, some of our visuals after these events are over. So I thank him for supporting um, displaying those here at City Hall up until now. So what did, what did we find out from the survey? Um, even though we talked to over 200 people, 38 responses were received in the survey. And uh, so um, I'll let um, Mr. Hardebeck speak in a minute here about um, information that he received that was not in the survey. But we did have a variety of folks fill out the survey. We had some from coaches, some from um, students, parents, and then also uh, folks who do not have a child in our district. Um, as you can see here, it was a little less than 50% of the people who filled it out who actually attended one of our events, and, um, and we still had um, a number of people who who responded but did not attend an event. As you see there, 24 uh, people uh, in the survey said that they were in favor of the Northwest location, three in favor of the Southeast. Um, nine folks, the reason I say there wasn't a specific preference is they, they just wanted to share some information and their thoughts, and, um, and just two who were not in favor of either location. So, some common themes that uh, that we heard um, was um, a preference for the Northwest location because of cost, it being um, uh, less of a cost. There were, were a number of people who um, had asked some clarifying questions about relocating the garden, and then also um, a lot of concerns about um, uh, if the park needed to be re relocated, people were concerned about that. Uh, a lot of people who completed this use that park regularly. Um, we did have a question on the survey asking for volunteers um, for a design advisory committee. And as you see there, we did get 18 people to, to complete that. And uh, so uh, in the next phase, um, these 18 folks will be contacted as well as putting it out to the whole community. So I wanted to, uh, before we go on here, give... Um, Mr. Hardebeck and Mr. Stokes, an opportunity to share a little bit more about the concepts if you have questions. At this point, any questions from the council? I think you can continue on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. So tonight, um, we, uh, the majority, like we said, of the public um, are in favor of the northwest corner, and we are uh, we're uh, requesting approval of the Broadway uh, field for um, for our new softball field, and um, uh, with the with the conditions that um, Spencer shared earlier. 
At this point, uh, I would like to open the floor for a motion, uh, followed if followed by a second, and then we'll open the floor to any comments or discussion from the council. I'll make a motion, Mayor. Okay. Uh, I recommend that we approve the request by the school district to construct a softball facility on city-owned property at Broadway Park, subject to the conditions in the staff report and communicated to the school district. Is there a second? Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Now for discussion before we vote. Any comments or discussion from the council? I have um, a couple of comments. Okay. I'm just really, um, I, I, I'm conflicted, but I really um, wish that you had contacted all the different entities and worked together with them at the very beginning of this whole concept because I think you would have had less um, opposition to it. And um, the more people I talk to or have heard from are not in favor of Broadway. Um, and especially the, the hardworking gardeners from the community garden. And I understand you're going to be working on a concept if this passes and we'll consider all of this. But I have a question for you because something came up to me at um, a commission meeting last week that about um, a field house that's being fundraised for up on by school property for around the track. Do you know what I'm talking about? Jeff Kilday is in charge of, is, is doing this. And I did not hear this from Jeff. I just have a question because I think that's where the whole softball complex and everything should be moved up to the high school property and get our children out of the tsunami. But um, anyway, I voiced my opinion. I just, it's just really disheartening to me that you did not contact, especially the Hirsch family, Seaside kids, and found out their input before all of this happened. Well, I appreciate that. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing the, um, the field house is um, a project that um, I've heard the Booster Club wants to uh, wants to work on, um, and that is specifically for uh, for seating and um, and a design at that field. I think that's going to be a long term project um, that they have. Um, I uh, I hear your concerns. I um, when I hear that. Um, uh, people don't prefer this site this was the this was why we did so many community events and and gave people um a lot of opportunities uh to share their thoughts um brian do you want to talk a little bit about the one-to-one -one conversations you had with folks at our events yeah i think some of the input that came from the the events primarily the football game was very telling uh we had some very uh active input from the student body uh, looking at the two options gave us some very insightful input that uh, we would probably have reached during the design phase um, but i think it also goes to that that's where the community that the in the insight we were given is that the majority of the input we had i'm not trying to say is that the common theme we had was that the community feels have been desired long term uh, and that includes broadway field um, as part of the district's long-term strategic plan that, that was specifically why the fields were not placed on the hill on the uh, on the new campus was due to feedback from when the first bond um, proposal was defeated and input from the public at that time uh, was very clear that the public would desire to have the fields down, you know, in the public common spaces uh, than on the hill. Uh, so that's one of the factors of why they were not proposed for the hill originally and where we are today. Um, that theme kept coming up as we had our events, uh, which I believe reinforces the public's acceptance of the common public fields concept 
uh, versus having private fields um, elsewhere within the communities. So that's not a response to it, but that's just the input we received during our, uh, the majority of our events as well. I'll also add that if we put the softball field up at the new site, it would be um, quite a bit um, difference in distance from the baseball players, and so it would require us to have an, have an additional indoor batting facility up at the new site because one of um, the Office of Civil Rights conditions is uh, equal access and equal um, distance. Oh. Oh. Go ahead. How long have you known you had to build these fields? A number of years. Uh, what's a number? Uh, 10 years. 10 or 11? Mm -hmm. And there was... Um, 11 the years. The field was added um, um, a year after Broadway, um, Broadway Field was built. Um, but according to our Office of Civil Rights visit in 2019, um, uh, they did not find that field adequate and added the new um, the new requirements. So in 11 years, it becomes a city's problem that you did not do due diligence and try to figure out where a field was going to go. When you did any of these surveys, were people informed that this was on public property and not school district? Yes. So they knew there was city park property. It was explained to the people. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I see I've talked to a lot of people and I I don't have even 50 percent that want to give our our property away. I'm not sure what you mean by that. <clears throat> well, it's it, the public owns this property. You understand the district wants to use it. It's owned by the general public. The taxpayers of Seaside, you understand that? Yes, and when we entered into the intergovernmental agreement a long time before I got here, but uh, there was the agreement between the, th the three entities, and it is spelled out in the no, in I understand the, uh, in the IGA. The, the football the, field. Is that what you're talking about? No, I'm talking about Broadway Field. Because, uh, it, I mean, it is spelled out in there that the district is the, is the primary user of the field. That would include the baseball field and the softball field as it then exists. And the field is also used yeah. for soccer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Soccer. yeah we understand yeah. that part. But um, this is, a, this is a, a whole different issue. That what You're asking the city, basically you're asking the residents of Seaside if the school district can use their park. Is that correct? We're asking to improve the softball field. We, we already have a softball field there, and, uh, and this field is used for our sporting activities as well as uh, the community, people who live here and people who come, um, who come from elsewhere. I think it should also be noted that this field remains a public open field, uh, just like the existing fields are now. So we're complementing, in our opinion, we're complementing the existing use of the facility with a more robust um, field for long-term uh, public use as well as the district's use. Okay. Other questions or comments? Well, I will share what um, I'm hearing from people, and it coincides with what both Dana and Randy are saying and that it has to do with the fact that the, um, the city of Seaside property is funded by the city taxpayers. The school district includes Gearhart, Cannon Beach, includes other entities, and the concern I'm hearing is um, putting the wants of um, non-seaside city taxpayers um, above the, the wants and needs of seaside taxpayers. Um, you mentioned uh, one of the things that, the, um, that is required, that if you had the the uh, softball field up on the hill, that it would be further from the batting cage. 
I guess that's a puzzle to me in that that batting cage does not belong to the school district anyway and was never there when you had these complaints by um, the Office of Civil Rights. So I'm, that, I'm a little confused about that. Um, I don't know how uh, an Office of Civil Rights can tell you that you have to be as close to a, uh, a facility owned by another entity for one set of students as you have it for other set of students. So that runs a little concern. And um, so, but what I'm hearing from the people that are talking to me is concern about uh, the use of, of the, the field. And um, more, that more than not, I'm hearing, why aren't they putting it up on the hill where they have property? So I'll start with your first concern. Um, all my experience with the Office of Civil Rights, and I'll give these two gentlemen a, a chance to, to add as well, is equal access, equal use of all of the benefits. And that includes not just the batting facility, that includes restrooms, that includes uh, to be able, uh, for spectators to be able to to have that seating. And so it is um, in the Office of Civil Rights uh, view that uh, that is a component to it, that it must be equal. I don't know, yeah, I know how much more I can add to that, but just to clarify, in the complaints or the recommendations for things to be to be improved, uh, one is sight lines of the spectator seating, and they compare it with the existing facility for the baseball. They compare baseball and softball. <laughs> one, the amount of the the equation of how many seats are allowed or required for baseball is so many square feet per adjoining person that's on a team. So that ratio has to be equal for baseball as it is for softball. So that right now does not comply. So that needs additional seating, also meeting ADA applications. Um, the options in the field also, um, the requirements of the field from Office of Civil Rights are that the distance that spectators would have to travel or walk from the spectator seating to restroom facilities as it exists now is 100 feet longer for softball spectators than the baseball spectators and they see that as a deficiency just as that's how they evaluate things is very black and white um, so i understand your concerns over what is what makes sense and what's in their in their survey may not be totally coincident at that point but those are the issues of the equal access, equal spectators, equal the equity between both sports. Um, the issues with the softball field now as it exists in the corner of the football field is that there are other sport lines in the field of play on the infield where the baseball is does not have those kind of confusing lines. So again, it's not equitable play in their uh, evaluation. So those are the kind of things where we looked at could we even possibly improve the existing location and without those free and clear lines of free play, the uh, opportunity for scheduling uh, a softball practice or play game has to be equal then equal to the uh, opportunities for baseball and um, practice and games. So basically that means you have the need for concurrent play, which they do not have in their current configuration there now. So those are just some of the items that the current facility is deemed needing improvement on um, versus a new field. And I can understand what you're telling me on all that, but what I'm hearing from my constituents and from the people who are talking to me is, number one, why didn't this get taken care of way back, because it's 12 years old? 
why is it now suddenly the city's fault that this isn't being done? And the last one Can I is, just interrupt there for a minute? How is it the city's fault? I'm, I am telling you what people are saying to me. Well, I'm trying to clarify that because I don't believe it is the city's fault that, this, that we're in this situation. But, you, you come to ask us to help you solve it, but I don't think, I don't want to own that. That's what I'm well, saying. Well, why is not doing it then the city's fault? But this is what is being said to me. This is, I, I'm sharing the information, just like Dana and Randy have. Okay. And the last thing is, again, putting the school district uh, needs and wants ahead of the needs and wants of the taxpayers who own that property. That, and that, that's what I'm hearing from my constituents. So I, just, I would just like to clarify that our parents and our student athletes are part of our community. And we, um, we are trying our very best to find a location that serves, the, serves this Title IX that provides our athletes with the best possible field and is fiscally responsible for our taxpayers. If we were to put our, our fields up at the new site, uh, it would cost so much more and would also not have the, um, the central location. In addition, we have a lot of folks who are excited and and hopeful that we can use um, our flat ground up there for a performing arts center. So it's balancing all of those needs and wants. I'm here. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I just have a couple of questions. What are, is the estimate of your costs for building the field in the northwest corner of uh, Broadway Field? So once again, this is, uh, you know, the, the concepts that we have will be able to get down into sure. the nitty gritty details of that. But uh, by the estimates from uh, ZCS and, um, and from our research, we will be able to, uh, if the Broadway field uh, location is approved, be able to um, make all of those um, all of those adjustments including um, to be able to uh, prepare the team rooms inside um, Broadway Recreation Center and also Sunset Imp Sunset uh, Recreation Center and we hear so much from our community that we don't have enough fields that we can use year-round. This would also allow us to synthetically turf our field inside of our track, which could be used by our athletes and anybody else in our community. Okay, the, my other question I, I think I'll, I'll send to Spencer. The property that is owned by the city of Seaside that is being considered, how is that property currently being used? So, <clears throat> Someone else will know the history better than me. I believe that there was a softball or baseball facility at some point there. There's still some some fencing up, but that has not been used for some time. So right now it is just a vacant lot. And I should say it's only partially our property. Part of it is also owned by uh, Sunset Empire. Right. right. May I? We've got a map up yeah. here. I think I can clarify that. Yeah. We could move the slides forward to the northwest option. So. so when we talk about the northwest option versus the southwest option. It's on the screen option, behind you there, too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Perfect. Right here is where we have the kayak launch and the city park. Mm -hmm. um, in this northwest option, none of that is impacted w whatsoever. The proposal is for this northwest corner. Um, right now, the softball field sits about right here, right where my hand is over the top of the football field. This proposal takes the softball field and effectively picks it up and moves it and rotates it into the northwest corner. Um, I have not been on site uh, in that corner of the property for several months, but last time I was there it was uh, grass that was pretty soggy and uh, I saw people utilizing the football field, the baseball field, uh, walking on the turf, 
but uh, from my perspective as an engineer, it, it's an empty area that's uh, underutilized. I, I didn't see community people using it. That doesn't mean that they don't. Um, but right now, it's it's a grassy area in a part of the property that is far removed from parking and um, is kind of hard to get to. There's not there's not a lot of reason to go up there. Um, specifically, talking about the property line, the property line goes right through the middle of the field. Um, this is City of Seaside property, and this is Sunset uh, Parks and Rec, and it's this red line right here. Good. Thank you. David, you had... Come yep, on. thank you. Um, I believe we are at a point where the 11 years that have passed are never going to be gotten back, and it makes it a bit of a moot point because it's much like um, uh, sunk cost. We are where we are at this moment, and I see this project as a way to get another entity, which is still funded by our taxpayers, to improve an area that we don't have any plan to improve at the current time or in the near future and to make it a better facility for our residents. The concerns that I do have, I do have concerns like some of our residents about the community gardens being removed and that replacement of those needs to be a consideration in the project and to be funded uh, by the school district to make essentially our residents whole for that but I believe the rest of it is an improvement for our community uh, I asked I was kind of the fly in the ointment at our last meeting and asked that we got more community feedback I've gotten community feedback uh, from members of the community and it has all been supportive uh, so with that I felt comfortable making the motion this evening okay. thank you uh, Tom do you have any comments yeah um with regard to the expenditures of funds for development of the park or of the field, using uh, uh, school district funds on city lands, uh, I think it's a, it, it's a mistake to try to declare that um, Seaside provides an unfair burden for the construction of the park because we own the property. Uh, the construction funds would be paid for or recruited through the school district. And the school district also benefited from the, the vote of the voters of Seaside Gerhardt in Cannon Beach to move the school up on the hill, which is an, it's more than just an educational establishment. It's a survival center for tsunamis. And uh, the, as I recall the votes, the people of Cannon Beach and Gerhardt voted higher percentages to support that school than the voters of Seaside. So I think th in, a, in the bigger sense, this is a, a facility and a project that is for the entire school district and, uh, and the Park and Rec District, even though Gerhardt and Cannon Beach so far have kept themselves out, mostly, I think, to avoid paying extra taxes. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm confident they'll come around one of these days, uh, but it, we may all be out of office and maybe uh, out of existence by that time. Uh, I, I would, but I, I do, uh, given the fact that the voters of Cannon Beach and Gerhardt supported the moving of the school, uh, I, I don't have any trouble uh, with uh, the school district handling their share of the costs, which comes also from this, uh, these other two communities. So uh, it's a little complicated. I'm sorry I'm not more oh, efficient, good. but yeah, that's, good. that's what I had in mind. Steve, your comment. Well, I've uh, been talking to people all along as well, and I have not come across anybody that once I explained kind of the whole situation uh, said, no, it seems fine, let's do it. I mean, they all said that. I didn't find anybody against it. Um, again, because, you know, I've been out there and walked it and got my feet muddy. Um, I thought originally when this came up, there's actual softball fields still there being used. And I, you know, that's not the case. But it, um, 
it's just an unused piece of property and our park district or our park uh, committee said you know they're fine with putting this ball field there so if we're not planning on using it for anything this seems like a good opportunity to keep the um, kids and everybody right here in the main part of town um, we we talk about it's is it's this is uh, city property but keep in mind that uh, you know I I don't know what the percentage would be but a good deal of the people that are school parents and and as they're paying for the school taxes they're paying city taxes too yeah. so they're they're owners in this as well and you know they have a, a good solid support there so I'm uh, I'm ready to say we've talked about this enough and uh, move forward with the vote. Um, we do have uh, we uh, part of the motion is to make sure our city manager goes through all of these issues, and you guys will work with us and as well. I think I saw Skyler back there. Um, we'll all work together and come up with a plan that will govern this going forward, and hopefully, you know, we'll we'll stay up to date on that as well. So um, I don't know what else there is to say. We're, we're going to do the best we can, I think, going forward. And I think it's the best thing for the city as a whole, not just for the school district. You know, if, uh, my final comment is if we had an external uh, audience, let, let's say uh, a, a local corporate person came in and said, I want to build a million dollar softball field on that unused piece of property as long as the condition is that this group could have primary use but you could use it the rest of the time i would say wow that's a great opportunity that's how i feel about this uh, i i hear the concerns of people and the concerns that uh, dana and randy and, and tita have mentioned but i think overall this is a good thing for the young people of our community, the young women, young girls of our community. And I think we can be a partner in helping solve a problem that will benefit the city and all of our citizens for years to come. I think we've all had a good opportunity to state our uh, focus on that. Uh, I'm wondering if you're ready for to call the question on the vote. I'll call the question. Questions being called for. Are you ready to vote? Could I have a question on that, though? Sure. Um, given that public comment on anything on the uh, agenda was uh, not allowed in earlier public comment, could only be for things not on the agenda. And the last couple of times we have allowed public comment on this. Do you want to entertain that? I'm, I'm open to that. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know we've got people from Seaside Kids, and we've got Park and Rec. If, if the council so desires, yeah. uh, I'll be glad to open the floor. Jennifer's back yeah. there. It was the Hirsch yeah. building. This, yeah, I, so. I see a number of your board members here as well from the school district board and your board chair. So um, why don't you please take your seats, and then we'll open the floor for uh, public comment. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Tita, for suggesting that. Thank I you, just Council. want one more comment. I wanted to clarify, and Susan, I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart. The best way to do things in this community is to work together. That's what I was trying to get across. If you had sat down with all the different entities, I think you would have been eight months ago halfway through the project. That's what I was trying to get across to you. Okay. Do we right. noted. Good. If you would like to address the council on this issue, please come to the microphone, identify yourself, your address, and keep your comments to three minutes. Yes, sir. My name is Shane Suve, 150 South Wahana. I'd like to point out the unethical manner in which this community feedback was gathered. And if you'd like, I can use their own display to give examples of that. In fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and point it out because Mr. Mayor, you asked specifically about the cost, and no number was given. I don't know if you noticed that, but there's a number given right here, which says that they do know the cost and are just unwilling to say it. Also on this, on the Southeast Broadway field one, can it go up here? I want to point out the multiple ways in which this graphic was utilized to direct the comments 
and to direct the answers that they got with things like questionably beats the spirit of the resolution. Oh, where's the one about uh, inviting graffiti? They knew what they wanted. They used the graphics to get what they wanted. And if I'm not mistaken, y'all had said no to this before you sent them out to get feedback as even being an option. In fact, Ms. Penrod told me ahead of the meeting at Sunset Empire that it wasn't an actual option. Presenting it as an option in that way was completely unethical. Yeah, thank you. Other comments? I'd like to clarify that in the spirit of transparency, this was a location that we were asked to evaluate. So we wanted to make sure we did that. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Abby Nofield, North Seaside. Um, good evening. Your address, please. Uh, North Seaside. Okay. Um, my name is Abby Nofield, and I'm a senior at Seaside High School. If you know me, you know that softball is one of my biggest passions. And when asked to speak to you all, I knew I had to take it. Softball has been a large part of who I am and has been essential in shaping me and do who I continue to become. I am here today to encourage you to take a step in the right direction and support the proposal of the Northwest softball field. I've been playing on Broadway field for the entirety of my high school career. As a softball program, we have taken great care of our piece of the field and set standards for how that it should be treated. As a softball program, we have also had to spray paint the lines before our first games of the season so our athletes don't misunderstand what is in play or out of play. We have had to set up and take down a broken, inefficient fence, not broken by us, but broken by our male counterpart teams. This means we either go without or play without it working properly. We have had to comb the field for shards of glass. We've had to spray paint our dugouts full of graffiti. In every sport I've played, my teammates and I have been belittled and shut down while we have watched boys get more. We are told to step aside during practices so we are not in the way, and we are out of sight completely when another team needs the field for a game. Why is it that their equipment is better and more important than ours? Why is it that their time is more valuable than ours? All of these things contribute to our performance. With this new softball field, we would be given the opportunity to play without these disparities. Equal playing conditions and equal access are standards that we should be setting for all programs, especially female programs. As a female athlete, I wish I could tell you I have not been discriminated against or felt discriminated against. I have often been told that I should be grateful for what I have. One of my mentors helped me put this into words about how it feels. Female athletes are raised in a climate of gratitude. We are taught to be grateful to play in sports that strong women just like us were unable to participate in just a few generations ago. I don't want to settle for that. I, I want to be able to enjoy my sports as an equal. I want to put my energy on a field in a game and not use it fighting to be able to play on a field. My hope is that we can continue to move forward quickly so that future female athletes can play on a field that the girls before me deserve to play on and that I should be playing on. No more fighting, no more stressing, going without or settling. It's time to put the right foot forward so as female athletes, we get to play. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much. You. I think wow. we understand yes. that. Yeah. Great job. <laughs> Other comments? Yes, sir. Brian Taylor, <laughs> Cannon Beach, Oregon. You can hold it. Well, maybe. It'll be all right. Take the mic out <laughs> if you want. Yeah, there you go. There. Cannon Beach, Oregon, Seaside School District Board Chair. I want to thank you all for all the time you spend in this community that you give volunteering for your city. Thank you. The first, any decision we make in our district, and every question we ask before we make that decision, is what is the best thing for kids? Number one, that is the first thing we ask every time we make a decision. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Other comments? Is there anyone from Seaside Kids here that would like to speak?
We have their letter. Yes, yes, ma'am. Now you'll need to pull the microphone down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just pull the mic down to you. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good evening, and thank you guys for your time. Um, my name is Sandra Gomez, and I will disclose I am on the Seaside School Board. Um, I live at 718 Fourth Avenue in Seaside. Um, I um, am a mother of a current student, as well as a graduate of Seaside High School, and I'm a mother of daughters, as well as a granddaughter. So this is very important to me as well. I was not here 10 years ago. Many of us weren't, but we are here to try to solve the problem and support our students. We can look forward to what we can do to support our students. I am proud of the work that the superintendent, board, students, staff, and community have done to bring us this far on such an important matter to provide equitable opportunities for all of our students. And I want to show my support for the proposal that has been submitted with all the supported documents on the effort put forth so we can move forward to get to work on completing the softball field. And I do want to say that I have seen the board and the superintendent answer every question that has been asked to them and work hard to work late and as much as they could to find those answers for those questions that have been proposed to them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> About time. <laughs> got, yeah. Jessica Griggs, 1976, Pine Ridge Drive in Gearhart. Um, I have two hats. So I am a Seaside Kids board member. Okay. Um, and I'll just say on behalf of Seaside Kids, we support what's best for kids, just like Brian said. And so that's why you guys have a letter of support in your board packet. Um, second hat, I am the high school softball coach. And this has been, I've been here five or six years in our community. And it's been interesting, I'm sure like Susan can say for herself to step into this, that we weren't here when it all started. So it's been really interesting to kind of follow along that process um, and also see how our female athletes are directly impacted by this. Um, I was also heavily um, involved in the building of the facility um, and also a monetary donor. Um, I, I do all the scheduling for it, 28 teams in the spring between the boys and the girls, it's a lot, but I ensure that there's equitable access. Um, I guess what I want to say on a personal hat now is that the process could have been better. We could have had a better process the last nine months. Um, it could have been done 12 years ago right the first time without a band-aided solution two years later. All of these things could have happened. Um, but I guess I don't see any better solution for us right now moving forward um, than putting it in the northwest corner. It is. I was joking with Abby back there when somebody asks, what's it used for now? Well, we have to use it. Our high school softball team has to use it when baseball has a game and we don't have an away game. We practice with the ducks that are literally playing in the water in that field because we have nowhere else. We don't have any other turf we can go on because there's no fence put up. We can go in the facility, but you can't do, you can't do any outfield work. You can't do any true infield work with the outfielders. You can't do any long ball. Um, so we use it sometimes, but we'd like to use it in a more efficient way with some <coughs> turf. Um, so that's on my personal hat. Um, I'm, I'm super, super sad having been so involved in the facility getting put in. Um, that if this goes through that it would have to move. I know that we have so many local contractors who've worked so hard on that, and many of them are my friends. Um, I just don't know what other solution we have. I don't see any other solution for us. Um, and I know we've had great questions about putting it up at the high school. Um, and all of these things that I hear being brought up again tonight about, well, why can't it go here? What about this consideration? These have all been discussed. Um, at all those different events. Um, and there's been information provided about that that I personally feel um, was sufficient. For anybody who sought that information directly <coughs> to Susan um, or to anybody who could have helped answer those questions. So all three hats kind of combined. Um, I just wanna say that um, I wanna see our female athletes have equal access um, without further delay. It's just super important. And now being a mom myself, I would love this to happen before Caroline's in high school and wants, hopefully wants to play softball um, and can do it somewhere that's not like next to ducks and water. So. Good. Thank you. <coughs> thank you very much. Thank you. 
Other comments? I have one more. Yeah. Go ahead, Randy. Um, what I, thank you, Abby, for that, uh, that nice uh, letter you wrote. Um, I had a daughter that played four years of softball, and I'm all for I'm all for a new facility and and uh, one being built that that is just as nice as the boys with dugouts and whatever um, whatever else they have. Um, I can tell you that everybody on this council wants the girls to have a, a facility. The only th the only thing the point we brought up was that why did you wait till now and why did you make it? sort of the the city's issue and i i'm sure we'll probably end up going forward with it but the issue was with with me i can speak for myself was that the school district really sort of painted themselves into a corner and asked for the city to to solve it we we want this for you guys we were just i'm personally i'm just disappointed it hasn't happened before now that's it Okay, I think we've had a good opportunity for good input. Everyone from the council has spoken. Um, I'm going, we've got a, a motion and a second. I'm going to ask for a roll call vote, uh, please. And uh, so that we're all on the record. Um, the, again, the motion is to- um, To approve, approve, approve the- The proposal the as, it, as it is with the conditions outlined in the uh, document that Spencer provided for us. And in lieu of um, the request here from the gardeners, is part of that that they, they will be involved in the relocation of, of the garden? Um, <clears throat> I think that's something we can, as we work on the site plans, we can definitely look at um and that's something i think i i know that i know that we have additional space down at the south end of town but the gardeners aren't too happy with that location they need in to the first place. be able to approve so, so i think us finding another location for it to be is part of part of the project going and forward. part of the cost that they would bear yeah. i i actually i actually have a meeting tomorrow with a private landowner yeah about good. using their property i would say that so. the the location may or may not be at that 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 facility so if that's something you want to add it needs to, to be motion. a place with lots of sun and good soil and good access yeah yeah can that lots be added as a condition that that appropriate yeah uh, my, the only the only reason i'd be yeah. hesitant uh, on it yeah. is no. um it's it's, I'm, 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 yeah. it's not our property right now yeah correct oh yeah. i hmm. see that that's my only hesitation that's, there is that would be something for Sunset Empire, uh, I'm as my understanding yeah. to work out. Yeah. Well, and one thing to keep in mind is the the final agreement's going to come back to us. So anything that we are specifying, all, all we the think plans be and everything, there, we have to be able to approve. Yeah, we've got to be able to prove it. Yeah. So okay. you know, there's no question in my mind that that should be in there. But you're going to figure that out. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, ready for yes. a roll call vote, please. Thank you, Mayor. Council, Councilor Phillips. Yes. Councilor Pazalski. Yes. Councilor Horning. Yes. Councilor Frank. Yes. Council President Wright. Yes. Mayor Barber. Yes. Councilor Montero. Yes. Okay, the motion carries. Thank you all so much for uh, your diligence and keeping with this until now we have the work to do. So we'll be looking forward yeah. to hearing back from you as you go forward. Thank Mayor, you so I, much. I would like to add one more thing on this, and that is part of the one of the conditions that we set has to do with the interlocal agreement, etc. cetera. Um, I said this all along, and now I think it's even more important we need to have it established who owns that batting building. As I said way before, if anything should happen to it, who are we supposed to be dealing with if we don't know who owns it? And I'm seeing a lot of this kind of thing. Um, we, we need to come out of this with knowing who owns that building. Spencer, I'll just say uh, I would love to have that too. I want. I'd like to have that clarification. Uh, I'm not an attorney. We'll have an attorney look at it, and 
and maybe there is some negotiation that has to happen between the entities because uh, uh, it would solve a lot of problems to have that answered. So I will definitely uh, work towards that and uh, we can report back and, and see, see what options we have and what answers we have at that point. Good. Good. And, and Good. I would like to make one more comment because I would fully expect people who've come for this to be leaving now that we've resolved it. But Abby, you said something that kind of horrifies me. And that is that we, we need to give you, the community needs to give uh, girls the same opportunities and access as the boys team. The school needs to be giving you that. But when I hear that you had to work on, on fields that were not kept up, that had a broken fence, that had broken glass where the boys' fields didn't, and that you have to work with lower or less quality or l equipment that's not in as good condition as boys, that's not something that we can resolve by giving a, a place for the field. That's something I expect the school board and the school to be providing. If they're cleaning up the glass in the boys' field, they should be cleaning up the glass in the girls' field. That's what I'm going to say. Is there anything else that anybody would like to say on this issue? If not, we'll move on. Thank you. Uh, to uh, vacancies on our Convention Center Commission and our Parks Advisory Committee. Uh, we have uh, two vacancies on the Convention Center. Hey, Mayor. Uh, yes. Can you move the microphone a little closer, please? To me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Uh, we ha the Convention Center has two vacancies, but one application, and so I'd like to entertain a motion to nominate Linda Benjamin. I so move. Then move to nominate Linda. Second. Is there a second? Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same. Mm -hmm. The Parks Advisory Committee has one uh, vacancy and one applicant, Dave Eichenberger? Eilenberger. Eilenberger. Eil yep. Eilenberger, yes. I move to nominate Dave Eilenberger. Second. Moved and seconded. Um, any further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Same. We'll uh, set up an interview at um, our next meeting, if possible, uh, to interview these two. Two excellent applicants. Thank you to them for stepping up. Mayor? Yes. Sorry. So if I get, because we have one more vacancy on the convention center. So again, if I get applications in the meantime, are you going to want me to set that up for interview too, and then you can nominate later, or leave it open for a leave, minute. leave it open, it open. and uh, hmm? yeah, we'll we'll keep working toward filling it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good. New business. Uh, we have a, a liquor license application from Black Events. Uh, Doug, are you here? Yeah, I see you. Evening. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Thank you for seeing me. I'm Doug Nyblack. I live at uh, 780, or sorry, my business is at 780 Avenue B here. Uh, so we're right across the street. Um, really, we won't be doing a ton of business in Seaside. We do a little bit with the Beacon, a little bit with Dodo Bakery, and at private homes. But for the most part, we're up at larger event venues in Astoria or down in Tillamook. Uh, we're doing a lot of work in Portland now, but we do off-site fine dining. Uh, for parties up to 500 um, and all the way down to two. So today we did uh, three different events for, that were just two-person drop-offs for, for different guests. Um, so really I consider this probably the safest way to sell alcohol. Um, for every 15 guests we have a staff person. Uh, we have people at every doorway and every exit so that um, People aren't drifting in off the street to our events because they are private events. So we're able to really keep a tight watch on alcohol monitoring. Um, we also offer to pay for cabs for people uh, having a ride home if they hadn't provided that before the night uh, started to get interesting for them. So, good, good. I just have one question. Um, in the past, um, doing events off property, 
OLCC required a special permit. Do they still do that? Or? So yeah, they used to have basically if you had an on or an on site license, you would pull a TUAL, which is a temporary use of an annual license for that area. So this is it says on site on a lot of paperwork, um, but it's actually an off site license. So this would be like me pulling a TUAL for every single event. I just wouldn't have to actually pull yeah. that permit. Yeah. Um, now. It's kind of interesting with the OLCC, and I wanted to bring this up to you folks. Um, we maybe have three parties a year where we bring in our staff or friends and family. It'll be a private event still at our space in our parking lot, usually during when the weather's nice, and we would like to have alcohol available for that. Now, the OLCC stated that we were not allowed under any circumstances to have liquor sold on site at 780 Avenue B, Unit A, where my kitchen is but they didn't have any problem with me having parties at 780 Avenue B unit C, <laughs> which is our warehouse. Yeah. Uh, but it's owned by a different, it's all owned by me, but I have it under a different entity. So the OLCC has no problem with that. Um, I just want to make it clear for you folks. If you saw that, did, I'm did it cost you an extra liquor license fee? No, thankfully oh. no, because we're doing. <laughs> I was we going to say because that would explain it. <laughs> exactly right. In that case, we would be off site 20 feet away. Yeah. Well, you got a clean report from our police department on that. Uh, I don't think we, you know, no comments on that. Uh, I move that we accept it. Okay. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Uh, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same. Motion Thank carries. You so much. I want you to all know that uh, Doug has uh, served the Barber family very well uh, over, over the last couple of years. So thank you for your good service. But. <laughs> The next one is a, uh, a liquor license from the Billy Mac Seaside Bar and Grill uh, on U Avenue. My neighbor uh, is uh, <laughs> Flor Florabunda here. Yes. Please come forward. Yes. Oh, you do it, guys. Uh, can I reach that? You can. Yeah, there you okay, you there we go. Hello. My name is Floriberta Carmen, and I'm going to be the new owner of the Billy Max and Avenue U in Seaside, Oregon. Good. So this is basically the same license, just a transfer. Transfer owner. ownership. Yeah. yeah, that's what we're doing. So Michael Vasquez is uh, selling his, his business. So we're gonna keep the same name and everything else how it is right now. Same, same idea. Yep. Uh, are there three owners? Three owners: my son, my husband, and me. My son is right there. Good. Yep. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, you're my, you're my neighbor, yeah. and uh, and. You've done a great job there. We're welcoming you to the neighborhood. Oh, and, thank uh, you so much. Mm -hmm. And we're looking forward to serve everybody in the town, especially that side of the community, you know, to know that it's a nice neighborhood to be yeah. it is. there. It is. Great outdoor venue uh, this yeah. summer. So that'll, that'll serve you mm -hmm. well. Oh. And again, a, a clean bill of health from the police department as well. Mayor, I, am, I move that we approve this request. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same. All right. Thank you, so Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. See you around. We have representatives from the Hood to Coast uh, Relay. Please come on up, Dan. Have a seat. Yeah, have a seat. Yeah. Uh -oh. yeah. Come on. We may have some questions for you. Uh -oh. Oh. Well, all yeah. Well, get, you can get, come up too if you'd get like. Get the check first, okay? Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> right, yeah as, as is customary, uh, Dan Floyd with Hoodie Coast. I'm uh, sorry, Mayor Barber. Yes, thank Coast you. Uh, please use, Floyd, please use the microphone. Yeah. Dan Floyd with Hoodie Coast Race Series. Ross Hubbard is in the back there, and he handles our operations. He's here uh, annually for this meeting, but also many times throughout the year. Uh, we do have the check, like you said. We want we want a pair of bills. We want to urge your support for a continued agreement here in Seaside. Uh, but first we want to thank Mayor Barber for your support and your service here in the city. And mm -hmm. thank everybody here for the continued support. Uh, Councilor Frank, as you know, the, the conversation has changed considerably uh, since we all first met here, I think it was eight years ago when we first discussed a longer term contract or agreement. Um, I think we started with a three year agreement. We just finished a five year agreement. Um, we've had a lot of great support from the chamber, uh, the uh, chief hand behind me, he promised we'd be up here in under three hours. So he delivered again on that promise. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, chief Daniels and, and many others, 
Um, but we're, we're thankful for your support. We're thankful for the communication from as many stakeholders as possible. Um, like we said eight years ago, we want to, we want to listen and we want to improve our event and, um, and our impact, uh, here in the community. Um, just a quick recap on the, on the event. You may get tired of hearing this, but it's a 200 mile event that starts in Timberline ends here. Of course, this is a very important spot. Um, annually there are representing representation from all 50 states, generally 40 plus countries this year, 30 plus, there's still a little bit of a delay in travel uh, from 2020 and the impacts of COVID, uh, but that's, that's coming back. Um, media has been positive the last few years. Um, so I do think it shines uh, very positively on the state of Oregon. Uh, and like I said, Timberline, um, even the city of Portland, coastal mountains and seaside. Uh, so it's very good for us to have this opportunity to showcase um, our great state. Finally, uh, Providence Cancer Institute is our charity of choice. We've raised roughly six and a half million since, since we started this bit greater discussion eight years ago. Uh, for the Providence Cancer Institute, uh, the funds used to leave the state, they all, all of them, 100% of them stay in the state uh, within the Providence Cancer Institute. Uh, the greater event, um, there are other teams that in the event, and the overall impact charity-wise is roughly $2 million a year. Yeah. Um, but we you know, call out Providence as our charity choice, but others do raise money as well. So um, it's a great impact, I think, really worldwide, but um, we really hope that you feel the same way about the impact here. And seaside so yeah. thanks again yeah, thank you dan i would uh, just like a right. quick comment to say that uh, the uh, the event is just a good example of um, uh, listening to public input and uh, improving the event everything from the the number to call in to uh, all the agencies that participate who now give you uh, really a good rating yeah. yep yeah, that's right. Spencer, uh, you've looked at the contract. Do you have any uh, recommendations or comments? So the contract uh, is, is nearly identical to the previous one. The only change was the amounts uh, that they are contributing to the city. And, but the formula continues the same to be 5% each year. Um, and we've added uh, an exhibit just kind of outlining what our costs are um, that they can expect to be billed for. So just so the public understands when... When they are here, it does take up our police, fire, and public works resources, and so they do uh, compensate the city for those services. The other thing I'd say that's, that's not in the contract, but we continue to meet with them as we plan. Then also afterwards, as, as a follow-up to see how the event went, to fine-tune from an operational standpoint uh, uh, the event so that has the the least or the I may sh maybe I should say the most beneficial impact to our community um, I was able uh, I was not in town I was moving that weekend so I missed the actual event um, but I was here uh, when it was discussed at uh, I believe chamber and SDDA and uh, the feedback from the business owners was was positive uh, I know I understand that there have been some complaints in the past and I think um, they've gone out of their way as an organization to uh, make operational changes that make it a smoother operation here in Seaside, have a less of an impact to our residents and a more positive impact to our, our businesses. And so um, I think that's been very, uh, very, very good. Uh, and I think that we will continue to find opportunities to fine tune it and, and make the, the event even better. Great, thank you. Other comments or questions from the council? I, I would just say that uh, we definitely have had issues in previous years, but this year I didn't hear anything after negative. I thought it went extremely, uh, it went very smooth this year. Mm -hmm. Good, good. If there are no other comments, I'll entertain a motion to approve the contract. So as moved as that we approve the contract. Okay. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Uh, those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed the same. Since this is my last time to get this, I'm going to come down there and you're going to give me the check. Yes. <laughs> and I'm going to give it over there. Okay. Uh, check that endorsement. Yeah. Where's RJ? Did you take a yeah. picture of anything? It's made up to the 
<laughs> hey, why don't you guys do it again so we can actually get we'll get an actual picture? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right. And I will do this while you hand it over again to the city manager. I'm going to give it to someone. I thought you were going to hand it to me. <laughs> oh well. Nice guy. Sometimes it works. It was 30, what is the total amount? 30,000 even? Total or? is $30,387.66. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and just to, just to clarify, that number is in, additional, in addition to our extra expenses that are related to That's having Hood to Coast here. So that is just money contributed not to pay and for actual Traditionally, fees. those uh, have been spent on improvements to our parks. Our parks. Mm -hmm. Thank yes. You. And in addition parks also budget. is the fundraising event that the chamber holds, uh, which benefits the work of the chamber significantly as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. Very good. Thank you again. Next is uh, resolution 4012 and Jeff Flory is coming forward, uh, planner, to tell us about this. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, members of the council, for having me up again tonight. Uh, this is in regards to an easement at 1500 uh, Jeff, or Spruce Drive. Uh, the property location was Jeffrey Drive. It was vacated by the city council in 1995. During that vacation, I don't know the history of what happened, but there was a, a utility easement, a 10-foot wide utility easement that runs north and south that was not vacated at the same time. This property is under private ownership now. <clears throat> the developer has built a duplex, uh, and through work done by the developer's surveyor, this easement was discovered to still exist. Uh, after a site visit with our uh, sewer foreman and discussions with Public Works, we determined that the city is not using the easement and has no need for this easement, and it would be a good idea to vacate it. Uh, that way the developer can continue with their, their project. Uh, I provided a staff report. It talks about a little, the, little of the history of this, and if uh, John, you can flip to the next one. This is a exhibit that uh, the surveyor uh, drew up to kind of show where the easement currently is, um, and the new proposed easement where uh, there are certain utilities that are in that easement that wasn't put in place at the same time the street was vacated. So to clarify, the the hatched area is the current easement, and the polka dot area is the proposed new easement that's correct the hashed area is what uh what we're asking the the council to to hold a public hearing on that's what the resolution is about that. is to to, yeah. Yeah. to notice a public hearing so we can uh, take input at the next regular scheduled council meeting and from them go through the process of passing an ordinance to to vacate this this unused easement Sounds like a cleanup operation. Yes. Yeah. To, mm -hmm. to correct something that's been there for a long time. Good. Yeah. Um, and, and you'll see on the, the right side of the exhibit, there's another easement on the adjacent property, 1520 Spruce. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still investigating whether the city has use for that. It's, it's a much larger easement, and there is potential that it connects into Jeffrey Drive uh, farther to the east. So before we explore vacating that, we want to ensure that we have no, no need for that. And the current building on that property isn't impacted by the easement. So there's no necessary need at this point to, okay. to address that one. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Um, any other comments? I'll uh, entertain a motion to read by title only. Resolution. We need, oh, public comment. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> I wanted to get this done. Uh, I'll open the floor for any public comments regarding Resolution 4012. Is there anyone that would like to speak to that for or against? Hearing none, I'll close the public comments and ask for any council comments. No. Nope. No. Nope. Now a motion to read by I title. I move we read Resolution number 4012 by title only. Second. Moved and seconded. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, the same. Motion carries. Resolution 4012, a resolution of intent to vacate certain property and the extinguishment of easements in the city of Seaside, Oregon, directing the city manager to give public notice and set a day of hearing. Move to adopt. 
Motion is Second. adopted and moved and seconded. Those in favor say aye. 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 The same. Jeff, <clears throat> thanks for bringing that to us. Yeah. Next is resolution 4013. This was the uh, issue that I raised at the end of our last co council meeting, if, as you recall, uh, really uh, enlisting us to become a part of this group, the Mayor's Association Task Force on Homelessness, uh, and this would enable us, if this is adopted, to be in line for some uh, financial resources to address our homeless situation. Um, any comments be, or questions? Be in line to... Uh, address the legislators yes. saying, please, please give do. us this yes, money. Right. Yes. yes, we, we right. aren't guaranteed to Not get guaranteed it by getting all. the resolution passed. Yeah. That's right. Any comments or questions uh, on that? If not, uh, I will open the floor for any public comments. This is 25 mayors, I think, that came together to kind mm -hmm. of move at this, and, and then they've asked the others of us uh, who weren't at the OLC uh, meeting to uh, to join them, and that's what we're doing. I'll uh, close the public comments. Any other council comments? I'll entertain a motion to read by title only. Move to uh, read resolution 4013 by title only. Second. Moved and seconded. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same. Motion carries. Resolution 4013, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Seaside, Oregon, authorizing its support of the Oregon Mayor's Association's track Task Force on hopelessness, uh, Homelessness proposal to partner with the state to fund local homelessness response and prevention programs to address Oregon's crisis of the unhoused. Move to adopt resolution 4013. I'll second. second Moved and seconded. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same. That motion carries. Thank you. We have a vacancy on the budget committee. One vacancy. Uh, how long was less on the budget committee? Less was, oh, good gosh. <laughs> long time. Yeah. Long, long time. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be sorely missed. Yeah. Yes, yeah, he will. He will. Be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Always had a good question to ask. <coughs> yes, he yep. did. So let's uh, put the feelers out. If anybody's in the audience tonight that would like uh, an opportunity to serve the city, the budget committee is a fun one. You really, when you've finished, uh, you have an understanding of the whole budget of the city of Seaside. It's very important. So moving on then, uh, we are asking the council to cancel the second meeting in December. I don't think anybody will be here on the 26th, I think. In fact, that's a going to be a holiday, isn't it? Yeah. The Christmas day, uh, the day it's celebrated or, I don't know, right word observed. Is. Observed, that's yes, the right word. Yes, yeah. observed. Observed uh, as, <laughs> since it lands on a Sunday. So I'll entertain a motion to cancel the December 26th so meeting. I'll second it. Move it and second it. Any <laughs> further? Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed the same? Motion carries. Okay, we're at the end of the agenda. Comments from the city staff. Chief, you'll get to be first because you're on the front row. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, just last week I attended a Oregon Chiefs of Police conference that was specifically for some smaller agencies, and so it was kind of nice to get together with some chiefs of police and higher commands. They're pretty small departments, actually, as we kind of went around the table. We were probably probably right was the largest agency there. So it was really neat to see uh, some stuff that people are doing around the uh, around the state. Uh, same, similar problems, but maybe sometimes not the same as some of the very large agencies. So I thought it was a good, uh, good conference to go to. So um, anyway, and then uh, we're still in the hiring process of that last uh, patrol position, uh, hoping to get that filled and uh, person on in the next month or so. So if everything goes According to the plan, we'll be in better shape. Um, and then we are open right now for applications for a dispatch position. So if you know anybody that might be interested in uh, a very uh, um, multitasked <laughs> position and uh, a life dealing with 911 and, uh, yep, and very the, important. the first, uh, first call taker of the first responder organizations and professions. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're looking for a dispatcher 911 communicator. So anyway, thank you. Good. Good. Thank you, Chief. Dale McDowell, Public Works.
Thank you, Mayor and Council. I have a couple things for you tonight. Uh, the first is an update on our dryer and our press. Uh, the press is just about done. I couldn't get any site on photos because of proprietary reasons. Um, but this is the warehouse that they're being made in uh, here in the United States, which is great. And there's the dryers being made. Uh, they obviously are having a meeting there right before their coffee break. So, <laughs> <laughs> But we do want to give you an update that uh, we're anticipating late April uh, to, for the centrifuge to be here, and then the dryer will follow it almost immediately. Great, great, wonderful. And then I also wanted to talk to you about uh, Thanksgiving high tides. We have king tides coming up. Yeah, we mm -hmm. This nice little graph you can see Thursday the 24th, but I'm actually looking at Wednesday also to kind of be prepared uh, Thursday, Friday, and even into Saturday. We're going to need a lot of rain coming down. We're going to need some wind pushing behind those to cause us a lot of grief. But again, we still will have some uh, wow. high tides. Those are about 1130 in the morning to maybe 115, 119, somewhere out in there in the afternoon for those three days. So be some, if it's a glorious day outside like it was today, exciting waves coming in. Should be a lot of fun to see those. And we'll let you know if we have to close the cove. <laughs> uh, the other thing, we have a new sweeper. Uh, you may have seen it in town. It's got the third arm on it, so it's doing the corners. It also is able to lift up and do the top of the curb to get rid of that pesky grass that grows between the sidewalk and the and the curbs darlene's had three days on it uh, it's great she, she's doing a great and it's job lit on. up underneath too yeah, it's, it's cool. lit up <laughs> cool. it is like sitting in a, a fish bowl when you look out into the thing it's awesome um so we're excited about that this was budgeted through the budget committee uh some of that was paid through street tax dollars mm. and some of it was our equipment budget for public works uh, downing park as you know, we've been working on that concrete. The first concrete is going back in tomorrow morning. Uh, it is stamped or will be stamped red, just like our crosswalks. And Pam Fleming is on board with a new landscape design. So kind of keep an eye on that area. It's, uh, we're pouring tomorrow, Wednesday, and Friday. We should have it done with the concrete on Friday because, you know, we've got a Christmas tree they want to put up down there. That's we're right. trying to to beat the schedule um, the last thing I have for you is I wanted to publicly announce tonight that my planned retirement date is January 31st I'm not hearing this is anybody hear that? Somebody, somebody, something's wrong. <laughs> January 31st of 2023 and my wife asked me she says really that's like a Tuesday I said yeah I got to get the week started <laughs> so I just oh, wanted man. to I'm not big on social media I don't like rumors. You're hearing it from the horse's mouth. Okay. Both Spencer and John are working together with me um, on some of the things that they'd like to see finished up before uh, I exit. And we've been doing succession planning in our department since I've been here, working hard. And as that process works through with John and, and see what we do for um, uh, employment advertising, you know, we'll work on, or they'll work on all of that, and I'd be glad to help with whatever they need. But I wanted you to hear for sure. Yeah, thank you, you. Okay, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just told Bob, kind of asked me just recently. He says, "I heard a rumor." I ah, don't believe rumors. <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dale. I think all of us on the council want to say we've dreaded this day to come, but mm -hmm. you deserve a good retirement, and we're going to miss you. We really are. The city is going to miss you. Yeah. Many people don't realize I'm almost 69 years old. Oh. Stanley left me the oldest employee of the city. Of Tucson. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be yet for very long. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I understand that. Okay. Hey, uh, John, uh, any comments this evening? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, so as Dell noted, that's that's a project that, that we'll start working on right away, um, working with Spencer and, and Dale. 
And uh, Chief noted the 911 dispatcher, that's actually currently open until the end of the month. So again, just reiterating that, that opening for position. And Spencer and I are also continuing to work on the um, library director process. Uh, we actually met with a recruiter today uh, who gave us some good insights and information. So we, we plan to keep plowing ahead on that one and, and hope to have that listed again soon. And then I'm just gonna give another plug for uh, the Seaside 101 podcast, the wonderful young woman you heard from tonight, uh, is is helping to lead that charge, Abby Nofield, along with Ryan Verosa and Brody Hillman. They're the three seniors that are working on the Seaside 101 season two. Uh, they've interviewed uh, many individuals already, and, and I'm going to say maybe in early January we'll have a first episode. I'm Hopefully I don't put too much pressure on them by saying that, but that's that's what I think we're we're uh, gearing towards. So they've been doing great work though, and we got some tremendous young people in our community. Yeah, well, thanks for mentoring that group. That's of kids. great. That's yes. wonderful. Very Thank nice. You. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, Skyler. And oh yes, uh, we have Skyler and uh, and also SDDA. Nobody from Chambers this chamber. There. She's not in oh, the there she there. is. Yes. Okay, Skyler, come on up since you're standing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for I get Zach. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. Need to stand because uh, yeah, I'm, I'm worn out at the, at the long day. Sorry. Uh, yeah, things are going great. It's good to be here and uh, glad to see uh, the the positive discussion and uh, development with Broadway Field. I think there's a lot of questions that we still have to work through, and you alluded to a lot of those uh, same concerns that we have. Um, but um, I feel like we're in a good place. Wanted to just share couple of our events coming up uh, on Thanksgiving. So uh, at 9 a.m. we'll have our, our annual turkey trot. It's a, a really fun event that's grown in popularity. And last year, last couple of years, we've averaged over 300 runners walkers. We have a new route this year. So we're really excited about uh, taking advantage of um, the way our city is set up is really conducive for a 5K. It's awesome. Good. And I think that's one of the things that we uh, like about uh, the event and, and, and being here. And then uh, from noon to two, we'll be serving a free community Thanksgiving meal at the Bob Chisholm Center. Uh, last couple of years, we've done that uh, only to go, but we're go we'll have in-person dining for anyone in the community. We also have lots of opportunities for volunteers and donations of uh, specific food items um, or even, even uh, financial donations are welcomed as well. And we put that on with uh, helping hands. So just uh, a couple of really co good events. And then, sorry, I can't tell if I'm talking too loud, but feel like I am. Um, one other thing I wanted to share, and uh, I was going to tell Dale this, but um, I guess he won't, he won't be here for much longer, so tell Dale's replacement, whoever that might be. Uh, but just recently got back from the Oregon Recreation Park Association Conference, and one of the topics that was heavily discussed was there's a program in our state called the Local Government Grant Program. I think the city of Seaside has been a recipient of it. It's a grant administered through Oregon State Parks, and it's uh, the funding sources through lottery dollars, and there's a clause or a stipulation in the uh, legislation that if the lottery dollars exceed a certain amount, then um, uh, basically more money is available in the local go government grant program. Well, because lottery dollars over the past couple of years have exceeded that amount, that kicker is going to be initiated probably next year, and so that funding source is going to probably double to around 25 to 30 million dollars, which is substantially more than it is now. And um, I know from working with uh, other uh, park and recreation agencies, it's a really beneficial grant to apply for. There's large amounts of funding available for park development, trails, uh, resources like community gardens, um, restrooms and parks. I know we're, we're looking at a couple of projects maybe on, on our property, but I, I think maybe there's a project that we can work on together. So just wanted to share that with you. I know you'll be entering into your um, planning session and budget process soon. So thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. I did not see Zach back there, our finance officer, but uh, had the opportunity to meet Zach uh, this week. Zach, any comments you want to make tonight? Nothing for me, thank you. Okay. Uh, great Thanksgiving. Oh, good. Great <laughs> to have you here. What's happening at the chamber? Start there. Hey, thank you. <clears throat> Lots going on. I saw your post on Facebook today. Yeah, we probably have too much going on. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to be with Head to Coast. Ross and Dan have done a tremendous job since they taken, I don't know when exactly they took over, but they've done a really good job. And um, I just want to 
reiterate that um, the chamber does the beer garden for Head to Coast, and we donate all the tips to the food bank. So this year we got about 3,200, and then we ended up rounding out or rounding up to 3,500 that we donated to the food bank. Um, so every year it goes up a little bit, and so. Um, besides that, we've got um, the Pride of Lights and the Artisan Fair, which happens next Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. We also have the Tour Lights, um, window decorating contest, letters to Santa, a reindeer trail. Photos with Santa. I think that's gingerbread houses. The gingerbread house contest. I always forget one of the things, Um, but it's all on our website or yuletideandseaside.com. You can go there and and find all that. So um, that's all we got going on now. Thank you. Wonderful. SDDA, you got some support with you tonight. I see. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Carrie. Yeah, I um, had to go get her from Sunset Recreation because of practice. Um, So. In the last three weeks, a lot's happened for us. We did Halloween happenings. Um, we had great weather on Saturday and a ton of participation all around the downtown area. Sunday, the weather was okay enough, and we got the pumpkin drop done and uh, raised a lot of money for ourselves uh, to go to downtown beautification. Uh, Councilor Brzezowski helped us with our GoPro setup and got the video that we did not get last year. Yeah, good. Um, so it's pretty cool. Uh, I really appreciate it. <laughs> What's that? He, we he brought him up in. there, right? Um, yeah, he yeah. rode the crane up and then you know, got <laughs> We kind of almost did have to for a second. Um, <laughs> and then uh, downtown on Monday, the 31st, was great. We had a ton of participation. Um, it was basically three days of Halloween. And then uh, we went, we got two weeks almost completely, and then we had uh, the wine walk this weekend. We had amazing weather. Um, and then town has been really busy. So Friday and Saturday have just been so busy with tourists coming in. Um, on Friday, we were driving around and we couldn't make left turns on the highway very easily. There was a ton of traffic coming in. So that was really nice. Hotels, no vacancy. So it was great to see. Um, want to thank, uh, Katie and, uh, Jim, Katie McLeod from the chamber, obviously, and Jim Beasley from, uh, the Oregon coast. He, they came in and helped us with the wine walk. Um, ran credit cards for us. We're still a little scared of that technology, but I think they've got us through it now. We're going to do it ourselves, but um, just really appreciate all the help in the community. And that's it. Wonderful. What well, a busy time in our little community. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Dan, I didn't get a, a word from you this evening. Any comment? Good. Good. And then Kim, any comment? Okay. Did I get everybody um, except for the council? Spencer. Yeah. Who? Spencer. That, oh, Spencer. That guy over oh, there. Yeah, that guy. Okay. <laughs> just, just one item, Mayor and Council. Um, uh, you, we've had you've seen some emails from me, and uh, I'm sure you've seen some other from staff. Just about our, our, our campsite at Mill Ponds. Mm-hmm. We continue to monitor that. Um, in fact, I think there was a article in the, in the Seaside Signal recently. We are looking to schedule a workshop for our December meeting to talk about some permanent location ideas have that discussion with the council get the ball rolling on that <clears throat> as my email previously uh, a week and a half ago indicated um, there was a need to immediately open up a second campsite um, uh, anticipating that um, we'll have the mill ponds area will flood again around thanksgiving uh, I've instructed uh, a Paul in our police department when they when we do the move out this Thursday that any tent tent campers locate to the second priority so that um, they're not in a situation where um, they can be you know in harm's way or anything like that uh, when that happens. I expect that um, uh, many will be there throughout the winter months. We don't think it makes sense to have them move in, move out, move in, move out. If uh, if we anticipate uh, our current mill pond site to be wet and then dry and wet and dry, and so I would expect um, uh, campers to be there throughout the winter, and uh, and we can really reevaluate in the spring. But I think based upon the discussion we have in December, hopefully we have some good direction on on where we want to be going. Um, but I'm happy to if you have any questions or or, or comments. Um, I can answer them tonight or feel free to come by and talk to me. And And uh, I look forward to that discussion as we continue to um, monitor what's happening there and and, um, and make adjustments as we see fit. 
Good. So the workshop is the meeting in December prior to the meeting in December. Yeah, we will have, we'll, we'll schedule a workshop prior to the regular council meeting. And, uh, um, that's the plan now. I'm sure that can change, but the idea is just to sit down and to, uh, staff walk you through some of the sites we've considered, uh, the pros and the lengthy list of cons. Just so you know, there is no perfect, perfect site spot. that exists that we already own today that has no side, you know, negative impact. So, um, but we do think, I will say, as we have uh, evaluated uh, different sites, there's one that seems to be um, a, a better possibility than others. And so um, we'll have, be able to discuss that quite a bit. Yeah. Well, we look forward to that discussion in, in December. Good. I have a question on the the change to um, a different site by Thanksgiving. Um, we it took us some time to get light into the current site um, and also cameras. So I'm wondering uh, what are we going to do, or are we going to make sure and have lights, especially with it getting dark earlier in the day um, and camera and uh, running water. So um, we've talked about some of those things. Dale, do you want to address, I think some of those things, um, we've addressed some of them, but some of them we've, we've moved uh, toilet facilities and um, we're going to locate a dumpster there. Right, we'll um, do uh, lights again because I do have two extra lights that I ordered and then for water, the building had water at one time. We'll work with uh, Wendy here at City Hall, reinstall the water meter and make sure there's a water source there. Great. And then I don't believe we have cameras at the, at, at the site. We have... I have uh, game cameras at the current site. And I take those down every Thursday. I review the roughly 2,300 photos that it takes. And yeah, so it's not those. video cameras, but it is a, uh, a game right. camera. So yeah. you can just move that to the other correct. side. That's right. correct. Good. Good. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank you. Let's start on the right. Let's go to the right. The... Me? Uh, yeah, Tom. Thanks, Mayor. Yeah. Um, I would like to announce that on Friday at Broadway Park at 1 p.m., the Parks Advisory Committee and their consulting graphic artist is go going to install the new interpretive panel for the estuary functions that go on in the Neowana and the Nicanicum Rivers uh, and are part of our parks, um, natural history park. Uh, uh, it, information. Wonderful. Yeah, Good. and so everybody's invited to come and see the the new sign as it gets put up, 1 p.m. It's at um, near the kayak landing uh, along the river, southeast on the corner. east end of the, the very park. east end of yeah. Broadway Park. Good, good, Thank wonderful, you. good. Anxious to see that, Dana. Um, I can't even imagine the giant shoes of having to fill Dale's retirement, but I certainly understand. <laughs> Hats off to you, young man, um, and your youngster. Um, I also want to say that our, uh, I forgot the date, I'm sorry, but in February, the beginning of February, the um, community center is going to be doing their fundraising again at, at Fascination, so oh, I'll bring all the information to the next. Good, good. And that's to um, move forward with phase two of the uh, building, and they will be coming before the council um, to explain the ideas good. they have. Thank you. Wonderful. Randy. Um, <clears throat> just uh, thanks to all the volunteers and all the um, um, chamber SDDA to put on events, keep our city viable throughout the uh, winter months, although it doesn't feel that much like winter. Did one of you mention Parade of Lights? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. There's, all right. And uh, the only other thing is um, that I like to mention is is what uh, what I consider a success for Hood to coast from what it started with and what a what a mess it was <laughs> way back when and how far it's come and uh, when they when they first did away with the the, the bridge I just thought that's going to be trouble because they're going to use the stoplight but 
I was down there three different times, and you were probably there a lot, and I just didn't see <laughs> any issues whatsoever, and I was shocked. So yeah, I, was too. Um, I, I think it's just become a really good event. Yeah, yeah. good, good. On the far end, David. No, you're going to come all the way down yeah, here. Yeah, I'm going to come right. down and come back up. Uh, as we were speaking about the, uh, the <coughs> homeless tent and camping area, uh, I went out there this last Thursday, and it was the kind of the first week after we had a week that wasn't moved out. And the move out was very challenging. I was out there at 11 o'clock, and there was still probably 15 campers who hadn't moved. And they were having issues. There was a lot more stuff that had collected and trying to get people to move and um, it seemed much more challenging than the reports that we had gotten in previous weeks so it, you know maybe something for us to as we look moving forward um, that length of time that we allow people to essentially move in may need to be worked again and as we've said it's going to be a work in progress as we go um, the other thing is, as a, a couple of months ago, I came here with a, some musings about uh, adding gardens and working with gardens, and today we got the notification that Seaside Community Food Forest is now a 501c3 charity Wonderful. organization. Way to go. So, Excellent. Excellent. Um, I mentioned earlier I'm meeting with a private uh, owner of land that has a pretty significant area that is flat, sunny. Uh, that would be a great development for our community gardens, and I'll be uh, meeting with their organization to discuss the idea. Wonderful. Exciting. Water also? Yes. Oh, good. Yeah. Good deal. That's important. Good deal. Tina? Well, with um, this being the Thanksgiving season um, and listening to all of the activities that are going on, uh, I can only go back to what we've always said, and that is um, that it, we, it takes volunteers to make things happen. And um, sometimes when we say that, what we talk about are, are um, city volunteers and on our committees. But as you've heard from, from the chamber and from SDDA um, and um, other entities, uh, it takes a lot of volunteers on a lot of different projects and a lot of different initiatives. Mm -hmm. uh, food forest, yeah, that's you know that's the next opening for volunteers. And um, yeah, we're going to need to develop a board and bylaws and all that. Uh, so yeah. that'll be the next that. step. I just helped with that for another organization. Right. Um, so uh, there's a there's so many things that people don't see happening, uh, sort of quietly. But um, I, I don't think anybody in this town could ever say they can't find something to do because <laughs> there is always something to do. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and the volunteers, the volunteering for, um, for Thanksgiving dinner at um, uh, that, uh, SEPRD and, and uh, Alan Evans, uh, Helping Hands will be hands. doing. So again, and I just want to commend all the volunteers for the time and the energy and the caring that that they put out to the rest of our community. Wonderful, thank you, Steve. Um, there was a a meeting of Colpac and Northwest Act, um, uh, a, a business development and then a transportation uh, board meeting on Thursday, and then we got. Confirmation and Dale's mentions for the work is started out here on 101, so that's um, going to be happening all winter. Uh, also, we uh, got an update. I've continued to um, try to work with other people in the county to uh, see if we can get ODOT to move ahead on looking at the flooding on the South 101 again. Mm. And it was uh, Bill Jablonski. Uh, told us that he had raised enough money to get that reopened. Yeah. So we'll be working with uh, ODOT and the county and Seaside and Cannon Beach and uh, the state to try to see if we can figure out if there's a better solution or an additional solution. Um, don't hold your breath, especially on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, it's, it'll probably still flood if it rains. No yeah, rain. Yeah. Right. 
Um, one other thing was there. Uh, Betsy Johnson has been uh, heavily involved in both of these organizations for many years, and our meeting was in Scapoos, mm-hmm. right around the corner from her offices and her home. And she just dropped by to kind of sit in and see what was going on. But we took the opportunity to thank her for her service and Hello. actually brought her to tears. Uh, she, we gave her a standing ovation. Was, uh, she has meant an awful lot to this region and uh, all the things that she's done. She said she's not going away. She has 400,000 uh, people following her. So. Mm. Anyway, uh, there's a reminder again, there's a housing summit. It's open to anybody that wants to attend uh, December 6th at the convention center. Contact me if you need any more information. Uh, the last county housing task force meeting is up on the Cannon Beach website. Uh, we're gradually, slowly moving ahead with that too. And uh, I thank everybody for going out and voting. And I just uh, trust that everybody accepts the results of what happened and moves forward. That's the, the message we keep hearing. Yeah. And uh, let's let's do what's best for Oregon. Yeah. Well, thank you all. Uh, my comment really this evening is to congratulate those who were elected uh, to this body uh, last uh, Tuesday. Uh, Steve Wright as our new mayor. Congratulations, Steve. And uh, Stephen Dillard, who will represent uh, Ward 1. And uh, Tita Montero will return to represent Ward 2 and then Seth Morrissey, wards three and four. So that's how it's gonna be filling out. But I also want to say thank you to those who were brave enough to step up and say, I'm willing to serve if the electorate chooses me. So thank you to Dan Shore. Seamus, thank you for being willing to put your name up. And Marcus Runkle, uh, thank you. Uh, It reminded me, My first foray into politics was to run for student government uh, president (laughs) at at the university at the college. And I was just so sure I was gonna be elected, but I did not know kind of underground that my roommate was undermining me and supporting somebody that was running (laughs) against me. And I lost miserably in that first foray into politics. I was so upset that I called my dear father who was still living at that time and I said, you know, this is, this is so bad and I don't know what I'm gonna do. And my dad said this, sometimes you win and sometimes you learn. Sometimes you win and sometimes you learn. And so I think that's a good message for everybody who tried to serve, didn't make it, but there's a lot to be learned and there's always the next time. So with that, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much.